there's almost never equilibrium, but it's that oscillating in between those states and getting to be nimble at that and having the skill to do it. So when I do lose my game and I'm down, I'm not down for an extended period of time because there's nothing wrong with feeling bad, but what are you going to do to respond to that feeling? Welcome back to In Residence. I'm Keith. And I'm Laura. Hey, Laura. Hey, Keith. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing swell. What are we going to talk about today? So today, I thought we could talk a little bit about winning, losing, good sportsmanship, those sort of things, because we're going into football season pretty quickly. We have our fantasy football draft coming up <laughs> right. in a couple days. Yeah. And this morning when we were talking over coffee, you you were talking about something that you had read or listened to. I think it was by Seth Godin that I thought was interesting. Yeah. And I thought we could dig a little bit more into that concept. Again, to talk about winning, losing, and how to be a good sport. Yeah. So what came up was in a re-release of his Akimbo podcast he kind of brought up the question of like, well, what are, what are sports for, especially in school? He brought up a, a story of a high school team that was winning handedly over their opponent. And in that district, when they win by over so many scores, there's a meeting to, to see if the, the coach is actually doing their job. If you think about it, they're an educator and their salary is paid for by the taxpayers. And what is sport for in school. When I heard it again, it made me think of an instance where that kind of happened to me when I was playing hockey when I was in school, probably a teenager. And my coach, in between the periods, he's like, all right, we're up by however many goals. We're going to win. Like we can tell, we all know it. So I don't want to see anybody shooting unless we make three passes. We can work on things. There's things for us to work on. We don't need to worry about running up the score kind of thing. That was a really powerful moment for me to see a leader saying, hey, this isn't just about scoring more points. Like, what are we actually here to do? We're here to improve and get better. Well, how are we going to get better if we just run up the score on, on these kids, you know? And so it just got me thinking of like, it, it taught me a lot about winning and losing and how do you play the game and i haven't thought about that for a long time you know that that exact memory but stuck with me throughout a lot of my my life with competition and like i love sport i love competing i can lean into being a little too competitive sometimes but i've i've learned especially in having kids i think mm -hmm. seeing that hey, it's a game and let's, like we talked about last time, I brought up the Icarus deception, like getting too high or getting too low. Right. That's not good for us. So these lessons I've been able to, to remind myself of, but also hopefully instill in our kids. What's the point here? The point is, can we play the game and enjoy it? And yeah, it might be more fun to win from one point of view, but you can, if you lose, at least you were still playing the game. Like if you're going up against the number one team, you have to have some, some perspective of like, okay, are we realistically going to win? Like, it's always fun to, to try, keep trying and not give up. Right. But there's a, there's a lot in between there. Right. Like I'm, I'm rambling. So come, no, come on. No, <laughs> that made me think of this summer when child one and I played in a, a parent child doubles. Oh, the tennis tournament. Tennis tournament. Yeah. It was very clear that we were not going to win. We still tried. Yeah. But it was very clear we were not going to to win. Yeah. But our opponents didn't necessarily rack up the points. They knew they were going to win. But they didn't play in a way that obliterated us, right? They played 
to improve, to get better, to enjoy time together, just like child one and I were. I didn't think of that, but the way that they played the sport was actually maybe commendable. I don't know if that's yeah. the word. Well, it? or for me, it's it's sportsmanship. <laughs> sportsmanship, but or like, sportspersonship. If we do gender, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sportsperson. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, oh, that's that, weird, isn't it? Say that, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not weird, but it's a yeah. Um, I like how you said how you play the game. Yeah, how you play the game has become more important to me than the outcome. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a powerful posture to have, which is I'm here to play this game and how do I want to play it? Who do I want to be on the field while I'm, you know, whatever game it is, if it's, if it's tennis, hockey, if it's playing Settlers of Catan, do I want to be that person that swindled Laura out of her rent on Monopoly when we were first starting to date. And she's like, why didn't you pay oh. me? I'm like, you didn't ask and you rolled the dice. It's your turn. <laughs> you know, I was it, definitely never playing Monopoly. With yeah, you again exactly. That. Do I want, is that how I want to show up in the world? No, it's right. not, but that's how I grew up playing with my friends. Like we were <laughs> cutthroat, right? Sure. And there's a time and place for that. It wasn't with my girlfriend. <laughs> 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 and I, that was a good lesson for me to learn. That, oh, it matters how you show up and which arena are you in. Sure. You need to be aware and you need to proceed knowing how you might be perceived or being open to, oh, I did not show up the way I was intending. I need to adjust, you know? Right. Yeah. How, how you play, getting to choose what you want to play. And the outcome is going to be the outcome. So... I don't know. I, I've brought up like, am I going to cheer super, super loud every time the kid hits a home run? And then am I going to yell at him when he strikes out? No, that is not the way I want to operate. That's not the way I want to feel either. Mm -hmm. So. Thinking about the idea of losing and how important that can be to someone's development of character and learning. One thing that Gary V often says is how important giving children the opportunity to lose on teams in sports in particular, I think is what he typically is talking about mm. is something that in society we often don't do anymore as much as they might lose, but everyone still gets a trophy. I'm not saying that we need to get rid of participation trophies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to advocate for that. But I remember when I was young, if you didn't win, then you didn't get. Like the Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, medal. you're last. <laughs> Maybe. But not, not in a way that was shaming, but just more in a way of, okay, so what did I learn? How can I improve? It almost built in a different sense of resilience. And that, that would be what Gary is, is saying, is if he didn't learn how to lose, it wouldn't give him that drive and maybe that hunger to go at it again and try and improve. I wonder what that looks like. Even like with Child 2, last night, there's all the feels in a game. Video game. A video game that was not going well. And he had every right to be upset by what happened. Yeah. but. But now, going through that, figuring out how to show back up. Yeah, not to sit in the disappointment. Right. It's good to have, like, be able to navigate that without having it pull you so far down that it feels like you're never going to get back out of that hole. Right. Right. If you celebrate at the top of your lungs when you succeed, it's like, it's a long way down from the top of that mountain. It can you be, know? yeah. It, you know, so it goes both ways. But yeah, like how do you navigate coming back to the middle or like equilibrium, right? Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Something you just said, and you've said it a couple times now, and each time I'm like, but we should be able to celebrate. How do you know when you are celebrating too much or when you've hit that just right? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm wondering if it's a little more of an internal than an external. 
So I'm not going to lie. I mean, if, if one of our kids is playing baseball and they hit a home run, I'm definitely going to cheer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I think it's more of, you can be a, a gracious winner. Okay. As well as a gracious loser. When you fail, do you whip your tennis racket across the court or smash it on the ground and break it? Ah, okay. Or the same if you win, do you throw your racket up into the air and smile and cheer so loudly in the face of your opponent that you just defeated? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of in between there. Where you can both come and shake hands across the net. Yeah. And congratulate somebody for a well-played game and congratulate somebody for a well-fought win or... You okay. played amazing and thank you for playing with me. I can't believe I won kind of thing. Like it, there's so much in between that and it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm saying. It's just, yes, there is something to celebrating the wins, but I think if you're going to celebrate the wins, you also need to celebrate your losses. Yeah. And celebrate them in a way of this is an opportunity for me to learn. Yeah. To grow. It's really like acknowledge them. Because, that I showed up. Yeah. Because that showing up, right. That's participation. And so this is where I, mm. I get a little cranky about how Gary V tends to ride that participation trophy thing. Okay. Because I think what we really need to do is cultivate participation, opting in and enrolling and choosing to participate. And at the same time, acknowledging when you win and acknowledging when you lose. It's this, when you go to play and you get third and everybody just wants to ignore it. It's like, well, how about we embrace it? Because how else are you going to get better? You know, I don't think there's a problem with participating and acknowledging that somebody decided to show up and give it their best. I think the problem is when the outcome wasn't exactly what you wanted. So let's ignore it. You know, and that's kind of what I'm saying with like, okay. if I celebrate you hitting a home run, but I ignore when you strike out, or I berate you when you strike out and I don't celebrate when, you know, there's no balance there. Sure. And, and there's almost never equilibrium, but it's that oscillating in between those states and getting to be nimble at that and having the skill to do it. So when I do lose my game and I'm down, I'm not down for an extended period of time. Because there's nothing wrong with feeling bad. But what are you going to do to respond to that feeling? And same with winning. If you are celebrating so hard that you make poor choices and, you know, celebrate with a bunch of champagne and then you go drive your car around. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, like people okay. make bad decisions sometimes when they're <laughs> celebrating. It's like, whoa. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Too much of anything can lead to a, a poor outcome. Okay. But ignoring it, too, is not super healthy. Either. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay. My point was getting people to opt in to trying things and understanding that the outcome could be positive or a negative. Mm -hmm. And getting repetitions with having both happen, it could be a really powerful experience. So, I mean, maybe the issue isn't necessarily that that kids or people get participation trophies maybe where the magic is is that they show up and if they don't win they have the experience to work through that right because that's the resilience that Gary Vee is really trying to yeah push toward so maybe it isn't the the token itself but it's the the issue that if somebody has a participation trophy and doesn't get to work through that, that how do we learn and, and move forward and grow? That's a disservice. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Think of it as when you go in for training and you get a certificate or you get a diploma, you know, mm -hmm. all it really is, is you accruing experience mm -hmm. and it's just documenting the experiences. So I would, I would think of, I think I have over there in a box, I have like a, a sixth place ribbon for some kind of relay from high school. I'm not dwelling on the fact that I didn't win. I'm, I'm, it's more of like, oh yeah, I did that. Cause 
believe me, placing sixth in a race, I'm a big dude. And I've always been a fairly big guy. One reason I like skating is because I could go faster than I could on foot. <laughs> right. And there's a little more gamesmanship and some other skills and stuff is a, a, more of a game for me where running, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to win any foot races, but I did it Yeah, to see how I could improve. And I, I mean, that's for me, it's something that I want to continue to do for myself, which is keep trying new things and seeing how I react to it. How does it feel? Did I like it? Did I not? You know? Mm -hmm. And so it's picking the games you want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. When you were growing up and you were in sports, and I know you talked about one example for hockey, mm -hmm. but how were you taught to play the game well and have good sports personship? I honestly think it came from a lot of losing. It did? Yeah. Um, I can't really think of many teams I was on for hockey that were like winning all the games. I think I spent a lot of, a lot of that time on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Okay. So it was more about how, how can I do better? What can I do? You know? Yeah. I never really thought of that, but mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think once when I was real little, we went to state, but we didn't win. That was a bad experience, actually. I yeah. I was a young kid. I was maybe eight or nine mm. and drove all the way down to state and we weren't doing well. And they basically benched me. I'm a child and they didn't let me play one shift because oh, they were trying to win. That's not what sports are for. Youth sports? Yeah. Yeah. Professional is professional. That's a business. That's not I was sport. like... The that's, Packer season's coming up, and I'm like... That, that's business. It's all business. I want them to win. And that's why I can take it or leave it a lot of the time. I get pulled in because I love competition and I love sport. Right. But they're all making money. They're going to be okay. So how about I don't let that affect my day-to-day -day when my team doesn't win? Because I'm, like, saying my team, you know, like, you can tell there's buy-in there, but it's like, that's a team. You're an owner. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I get it. See, I, I, I don't want to get... I don't want to get tied up in that emotionally because I've been there and yeah. I've seen that I don't like when it affects my mood. So I need to create a structure for me to like, be like, okay, I'm going to enjoy this. But if I'm going to get so high when they win and so low when they lose, that's not great for me. It's all, it's what we've been talking about. So it's like, I need to, I need to find ways to regulate the way it affects me. Yeah. I think I've done a pretty good job. Yeah. I will say uh, when we were first together, I was surprised at how kind of grumpy you were. Not in like a forthright way, but just like kind of a mopey way. It affected my mood. It affected your mood yeah. if the Packers didn't win. Yeah. And I was like, what is, what is this? Because I was disappointed. Don't get me wrong. I was disappointed. But I don't think I ever... I was like, wah, wah. I think part of it is that it was very new to me because I never followed them very much like you when you were younger. Oh, you, yeah. I watched sports a lot, but I didn't follow very many teams closely except for the Red Wings. And they were doing really well when I was a kid. They won a bunch of Stanley Cups and were always in the playoffs. Okay, yeah. So in that arena, I didn't see a whole lot of disappointment because it, it was always like, well, at least they made it to the second round. You know, Fair. they did great. Like only one team can win. And not that invested. Now, when we got older and we're paying attention to the Packers, it seemed to be, it definitely affected my mood. And I'm like, I need to not let this happen. Like, this is not great. This is not great <laughs> for me. It's not great for people I'm around. I don't want to feel this way. So I had to like, Reflect and think of, okay, don't be so invested in this. They're all doing fine. It's a game. I can cheer for them. I can be happy. But I, I also, I can't be so happy that when the opposite happens, I'm devastated, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I get that. It's okay. This year you won't be disappointed because you know what? 
We're going to go to the Super Bowl, Keith. There you go, folks. She jinxed it again. I didn't jinx it. Just like we last almost, year. No, we almost got there. <laughs> we could have been there. We should have been there. Oh, yeah. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Oh, gosh. I love my Packers. It's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my motto. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be. Yep. Shifting slightly, but still connected. Fantasy football. We have our draft coming up. We have a really big league. Well, we have two leagues, but what's the one league? How how many? 16 teams. teams. 16 teams. Yeah, yeah. We had our draft order called by Greg Jennings, which was actually really, really cool. Yeah, yeah he was a former Packer. Yeah, shout out to wide receiver. My, my cousins, Danny and Adam, like really cool. Good yeah. idea. They got him on Cameo. Yeah. That was awesome. It was, it was really awesome. So we're preparing for that. We're often in the hunt. Oh, I did horrible last year. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm often in the hunt. I'm often in the you hunt, are. but I did horrible <laughs> last year is all I'm saying. That is true. That is true. So do you have, do you have an idea of how you want to approach this year? Like thinking about this topic of winning and losing and trying to stay pretty steady and having having fun but learning? Do you have an approach? Yeah. Well, we're going to try it again this year. It didn't go so well last year. Um, I kind of go with the first available best choice in the draft order. I just I let the computer tell me. Okay. And see what shakes out. Then I get to spend most of my time trying to be creative and picking up and dropping players. And that's actually fun for me is seeing, is pretty fun. seeing if I'll find like a diamond in the rough like kind the of thing. sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I kind of lean into that and have fun with that. Yeah. I think that's good. I'm trying to think of my strategy this year because I often do that whenever I get my report card from, uh, we use Yahoo Sports for one and ESPN for another, but the Yahoo Sports sends you a grade and how you drafted. Yeah. I'm typically a C minus or a D. <laughs> but then I, like I said, I'm often in the hunt. Yeah. Right. Because since it's a league, you kind of have to go deep with some of those picks. I find it kind of fun. It's kind of a game. You can see me kind of lighting up, I think. Yeah, you're very excited. But I know that I've shifted my approach because in the past, I used to actually get an Excel spreadsheet out. This is my analytical side. Get an Excel spreadsheet out, get all the players, and I would track who has them ranked in what ways you were researching like blog posts oh. and listening to podcasts I was, and like getting on ESPN two and watching like their shows about it. And I'm like, this is taking up way too much energy and time. Oh, so much fun though. <laughs> um, and so I, I'm going to try and not be super prepared this year, go a little bit more with the flow. Uh, but I want, I do need to get some of those, names uh in my head for the later round picks yeah i'm just kind of easy breezy with it yeah and i hope to maintain that whether i'm looking like i'm being more successful or not just enjoy it for what it is and it's a little bit of a, a fun little pastime that makes watching a game a little more enjoyable absolutely however i would like my name on the lombardi replica trophy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you would really would child one had it one year Right? Yeah. I don't think I've won it. Have I? No. No, I think I have. Have you? Mm. I think so. It'll be fun. I love those competitions. <laughs> Fantasy football. We also have a pick 'em league, which is pretty fun. I normally don't do as well in that one. No. I try it's to I try to see if I can get them all wrong because there's fifty dollars if you get them all wrong or right. <laughs> yeah, my dad my dad sweetens the pot if you get them all wrong. Yeah. yeah. Or all right, which is hard to do. Yeah. Either one of those is really hard to do, but it's kind of a fun game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I don't think so. Anything else on your mind? It's just, for me, it's really important how I approach the games I choose to play. And knowing the circumstances in which I find myself, I, I can adapt. If people want to go hard, okay, like just let me know so that I, I know how to show up. But... When it's when it's like sport, it's it's more enjoyable to simply play the game and see how it's going to shake out for me. Don't get me wrong; I like to win, 
Like, who doesn't like to win? But I've gotten better dealing with defeat over the years. Yeah. All right. Do you have any recommendations this week? I do. I've been uh, listening to quite a few podcasts, but the one that I want to call out specifically is the Mel Robbins podcast, the episode Seven Lessons to Learn Once That Will Improve Your Life Forever. Hmm. She tells a story about uh, hiking on the Appalachian Trail with her family and what things didn't go so well and what they learned from it. So it was, it was a really good because it's, it's an actual story that infuses those life lessons. So I really appreciated that specific episode this week. How about you? I'm going to recommend a book that's going to come out, I think, in October. It's Seth Godin's new book, This Is Strategy. I believe it's probably going to talk about choosing the game you want to play. So get yourself ready for that and check it out, especially if you listen to last week's episode and probably all the episodes that I mentioned him. He's always got some really great insights that help me as I continue to grow and move forward and set my aim on where I want to go. So I'm looking forward to that. It's coming up sooner than I think. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm really excited about that. By the way, I've been going through his workshop. This is strategy that I think the book is going to really dig into. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is so good. I'm excited too. October, you said? Yeah, I think it comes out in October. Okay. Mark on my calendar. Awesome. Let's get out of here. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Are we boring? Are we boring? Yeah. I don't know. Are we? I don't, I don't know. We'll end it with that. <laughs>